16, beginning at verse 1. The book of Acts, the history of the early Christian church. If you're in a church that does not base its doctrine and teaching and practice on the book of Acts, then you are in the wrong church. Because the book of Acts is the history of the early Christian movement. It tells us exactly how the early uh, apostolic church behaved, exactly what they taught, exactly what they practiced, exactly what they did and didn't do. And that is, it should be the foundation for every Christian church, should be the book of Acts. If we'd stand tonight in honor of the reading of God's Word, I'm going to give us a message, a hand up. Acts chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Y'all remember our Bible study on Tuesday nights? There's believers, there's disciples, and then there's saints. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized, how? In the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. All the men were about twelve. That doesn't mean they were all about 12 years old. That means there were about 12 men. <laughs> Amen. I'm talking tonight on the topic of a hand up. Master, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your precious spirit, which we need so much. Lord, tonight we need that anointing like we've never needed it before, that the word of God might go forth in boldness and power and might. God, that it might reach out to the hearts of those who have yet to obey the fullness of this apostolic message God, let this be a salvation message for them. Let them hear and let them believe. Let them embrace it and let them obey. Master, anoint the lips of the speaker. Anoint the ears of the hearer. God, that this, not, not one word, let not one word fall upon ears that are unwilling to hear. But God, today, touch every ear. Those that would hear by cassette. Those that might hear on the Internet. Lord, those in this building. Master, today we pray. Let this word come alive in our spirit. Help us, God, to realize this wonderful truth, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated tonight. Early in the history of this movement we call Christianity, men and women frequently received only a portion of the gospel, depending upon whom they heard the message from. You see, Apollos had come through and preached the message, and he left disciples in his wake. He left people that not only believed, but were honestly and sincerely doing their best to live up to the teachings of Jesus Christ. They were disciples. But Apollos had not waited at Jerusalem until the gift of the Holy Ghost came. He went out based upon the experience uh, of John the Baptist, he went out and began to preach Jesus without waiting for Pentecost. Apollos was our first Baptist. Amen. Based on the ministry of John the Baptist, Apollos went out and was preaching a message, Messiah has come, glory to God, Jesus is his name, you can be saved you need to repent and turn to God. And people were repenting and turning to God. But the fullness of the message, the New Testament message, was not known to Apollos because Apollos was out there uh, very, uh, uh, with a lot of energy and zeal preaching the message before it had been completed. Hello now. That's why Baptist folks are out there. They have all the zeal in the world, but they're preaching an incomplete message. They're preaching a message based on the message of John the Baptist. But John the Baptist is not the message you should be preaching. Peter's message is the message you should be preaching. Because Peter's message came by divine revelation after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
when Calvary paid for everything and the resurrection brought about a new day and we entered the New Testament era. But not one minute before then was the gospel message fully preached. Not one minute before the resurrection. The first, oh, hallelujah, oh, man. <laughs> the first gospel message ever preached was preached by two ladies <laughs> who ran from a tomb and they ran to the place where the disciples were and said, He is risen, He is risen, He is risen. That's the first gospel message that was ever preached. But never before the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ was a gospel message ever preached. And we cannot preach a partial message like Apollos, because Apollos preached what he knew and what he believed, and he was sincere. But when Paul came upon some of those that Apollos had taught and converted, Paul says to them, But have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Well, we don't even know what you're talking about. We don't know about any Holy Ghost. He said, Well, what baptism then? Have you been baptized? Unto, and they said, well, unto John's baptism. Paul said, oh, no, 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 this ain't right. There's a problem here. Children, I'm not taken away from the fact that you're disciples. I'm not taken away from the fact that you're believers. But I want to give you a hand up. I want to help you up a little bit higher. I want to help you up to a place that you aren't at yet. Because there's more to this thing than what you've been told. Apollos told you what he knew, but there's more. You need to receive the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And you read your Bible with me just a few moments ago, and you know as well as I do that they did both things. Amen. They not only immediately, the Bible said, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and immediately they received the gift of the Holy Ghost as Paul laid his hands on them. The sad thing is today there are people who are living with a partial experience. They only have part of the message. And when you try to offer them a hand up, when you try to say, step on up higher, <laughs> come on up a little bit higher, God's got more for you. They don't want to receive your message. They don't want to accept it. They don't want to hear it. Why, they're offended. Are you saying I don't have anything? I'm not saying you don't have anything. But honey, you can have a little bit of something and still not have what you need. Amen. I know about you, but I've been hungry in my life. You can tell looking at me I've been hungry a lot. But I'll tell you what, there's times you're hungry. And you go and, and you get some little bit of something to eat. And you know what? It's all well and good you had a little bit of something. But it still doesn't satisfy the hunger. It still doesn't take away the pain that you feel in your tummy. You still feel hungry. Well, that's the truth of the gospel today. This thing, until you get the whole thing, then you had not got nothing. If you don't have the whole thing, then it's like you didn't eat nothing. This is why folks need to understand that we apostolic Jesus name, one God preachers, we're not out here trying to put you down. We're trying to lift you up. Hallelujah. We're not trying to put you down. We're trying to give you a hand up. Just like Paul did to the disciples that Apollos had left at Ephesus. Trying to offer you a hand up. Amen. Some preachers, even in the apostolic movement, act like they're offering people a backhand. Smack. You don't get it. Smack. You're not doing right. Smack. You haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. Well, honey, that may be how some preachers do, but that is not tonight how this preacher's doing. I'm trying to offer you a hand up. And I'll tell you something else. I'm not trying to offer you a hand out either. Amen. Some people are too proud to take a hand out. Some people don't like charity. Well, I'll tell you what. I can't give it to you if I wanted to. If I could, I still couldn't because it's not mine to give. You've got to embrace it and get hold of it for yourself. And tonight I'm simply trying to help you to get up to where God wants you to be. My Lord, have mercy. The Roman Catholic Church scattered those who embraced the truth as taught by the apostles. And it wasn't until the beginning of this century that this message in all its fullness was revived all over the world and is once again being preached from pulpits far and wide. What a shame that so many allow pride to rob them of the full gospel message and experience. What a shame that so many wish to hold fast to that which they have 
rather than trade it in for the more abundant experience offered by the whole truth. Apollos was in reality a Baptist in his day. He really was. He knew that Messiah had come and his name was Jesus. But Apollos only knew the message of John the Baptist. And you can only preach what you know. When Paul came into town, that is to say into Ephesus, he had more to offer than Apollos had offered. He had the full message. John had died, that is, John the Baptist had died during the life of the Lord and had not seen the arrival of grace's provision on Calvary's cross. John could only preach to believe and to repent. That's all he had. But Paul preached not only to believe but to obey and to receive. After all, faith without works is dead. And I repeat tonight, James chapter 2, verses 21 through 26, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by his works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. This blows that whole doctrine, faith only, you know, that, it, you're, that, that all God's people need is faith. It blows that doctrine right out of the water. James is saying very plainly, ye see then how that by works or actions, or deeds, a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So there are many out there today who are like these twelve men at Ephesus, they believe and they count themselves as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, but they have not heard the full message. They have not yet received the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help us God. The Lord gives to every man according to their ability to receive. That's what the Word of God teaches us. But this does not mean that we are to stand still in the same place as we occupied upon first hearing of this wonderful man called Jesus no, when a man or woman of God appears upon your journey and offers you a hand up, then we have an obligation before God to leave behind our partial understanding and our partial experience, and we're obligated to embrace the full truth. We shall stand accountable one day to God himself for embracing the whole message. The Word of God says, James chapter 1, we're still James talking, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect, meaning mature, complete, and entire, wanting nothing, lacking nothing. James is saying, don't get to the place where you think you got everything and you shut the door to somebody coming and trying to offer you a hand up and say, hey, there's more to this thing, glory to God. Don't get so comfortable in your little religious position that you're not willing to receive a hand up. So somebody can help you up a little bit higher in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. That's what this ministry is all about. We're trying to help people find a higher place in God than ever before they've known. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 27 through 30, the Lord speaks of the unjust servant, the servant who was unprofitable. And this was his answer to the unprofitable servant. He said, Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Folks, 
If all you have is a partial experience, uh, then that is going to be taken away from you. Because the point here is not that you uh, stand before God and say, Well, Lord, I believed on you. That's what you gave me. When I first came to Jesus, I believed. And I felt that's all I ever had to do. And the Lord will say, But what about when that preacher came and tried to offer you a hand up? And you said, No, I don't want that. I don't need that. I don't believe that that's required of me. Honey, it is required of you today. My Lord, have mercy. <sighs> Children, I will listen to this now. I'm going to finish that verse, the scripture I was just reading, Matthew 25, 27 through 29. He says, For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That doesn't sound like a happy ending to the story for the unprofitable one. Amen. Children, when you're offered the opportunity to step up higher, you need to step up higher. Because if you fail to invest what you have in order to attain more, then all you're doing is sitting on what God's given you. God doesn't want us to sit on our faith. He wants us to use our faith. Amen. That's why we're baptized in Jesus' name, because we're putting our faith into action. A hand up today is not a hand out. Pride and ego need not enter into the picture. When God has sent you a messenger with the reminder of the message, it is, with the remainder of the message, it is not to be taken lightly. The Lord has done so because He trusts you to do the right thing. He believes in you and knows that you will do the right thing when the right thing is presented to you. Can you imagine how disappointing it is to God when He sends the message to someone believing that they'll do the right thing when the right thing is presented to them and they choose, no, thank you, I'll pass. My Lord, have mercy. What a disappointment. How many of us have kids and we believe in our kids and we think, my kid will do the right thing if the, you know, if situation arises, I know my kid, he'll do the right thing. And then what do they do? They get out there in the world and somebody presents him with drugs. The next thing you know, he's got a joint sticking out of his lips and a cigarette out of the other side of his mouth. And he's got a beer in his hand and you're sitting there thinking, well, good grief. I had such confidence in them. I thought they would do the right thing. That's what it's like for God to sit in heaven and watch His people, watch people who've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, but they don't know the fullness of the message. And then as the fullness of the message is presented to them, they opt out and say, no, thank you. I don't believe I want to go there. I'm comfortable with this over here. I feel good with this message over here. It's okay for me to go to First Baptist, but I'm not going to go to First Apostolic. Thank you very much. Because they don't want to obey the message and do... But isn't it funny how at Ephesus, when Paul preached to those men who, who he came in contact with, isn't it interesting how immediate, how immediately they obeyed the message? Folks, that's what we need in our world today, is people who have the sincerity of heart to realize that when this full gospel, one God, Jesus name, apostolic, Acts 2.38 message is presented to them, that immediately they say, you know what, that's what I need to do, that's what I'm going to do. I appreciated the ladies from North Dakota when they came to visit us some months ago. I don't push baptism in Jesus name on people. I don't try to get people in the water just to get them in the water. But for some reason, the Spirit of the Lord just pressed me that I needed to talk to them about it. Because I knew that the likelihood of my ever seeing them in this lifetime, it may very well never happen. So if there was any chance in God's eternity that they would have to be baptized in the name of the Lord, it was now. And I sat there at Denny's and I began to talk to them about baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And I began to expound upon it. And when I was done, the ladies looked at me and said, yes, sir, we want to do it. That's the kind of heart God's looking for. Those are the kind of people God wants to see. People who, when they hear this wonderful truth, they immediately embrace it and obey it with gladness of heart. That's what God's looking for. And there have to be, yes, and then they turn to the children and say, do you want to? And the kids said, yes, we do. Amen. So you see, I mean, folks, you have no idea what an eternal ramification there was in what we did that day. 
Those folks may never have access to a Jesus name church where they live, but it's all right because their business has been settled in heaven. Hallelujah. They allowed somebody to offer them a hand up when the hand up was offered. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Whew. Now listen, Acts 18, verses 22 through 28. And when he had landed at Sisera and come up and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. Gee, isn't that funny? Didn't we just read about Apollos? So are you hearing his, his bio? Are you hearing his resume? It says he was mighty in scriptures and eloquent. Came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit. So this was a fervent man. He had a lot of energy. Being fervent in the Spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them, listen to this now, and expounded unto him, the way of God more perfectly. Aquila and Priscilla took Apollos aside and presented to him the way of God more perfectly. Now again, we read the term perfect and we have a concept in our modern day minds of what perfect means. But in this context, it literally means completely. It means complete. It means mature. So they helped him to understand the way of God more completely. Hey, you understand the baptism of John. You know who Jesus is. But honey, you don't know the whole thing. We need to tell you more. We need to explain it to you more completely. My Lord, have mercy. They offered him a hand up. Amen. They offered him a hand up. There is no shame in not having heard the full gospel message from the very beginning. You may serve the Lord for 50 years in a Baptist church or in a Methodist church. Before you hear this message, there is no shame in not hearing the full gospel from the very start of your journey. The fault lies not in the hearer, but with the messenger. Your messengers were not preaching the whole message it wasn't until finally you came upon this messenger and this message that perhaps you were exposed to this. Or maybe one day another messenger came your way and presented this full gospel message to you. But my friend today, understand the fault does not lie with you. It lies with the messenger. If you have heard from Apollos, that's good. If you've heard from Billy Graham, that's good. You may very well be a believer today. You may be a dedicated, consecrated disciple of Christ today, going to church every Sunday, studying the Word of God, praying, dedicating your life to the work of God. All of this may be true, but children, God desires that we graduate to the place of saints. He wants to work His complete will in our lives so that we might be complete and perfect or mature. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11, through 11, the Word of God reads, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Hmm, it sounds like it works in perfect 
uh, union with Acts 238 to me. Baptism in Jesus' name for the remission of sin and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. How are we sanctified? How are we washed? How are we justified? In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Baptism in Jesus' name, Holy Ghost baptism. Sounds like Acts 238 to me. In Luke 24, verses 45 through 47, the Word of God reads, Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the Scriptures. This is uh, speaking of the disciples of the Lord after the resurrection. He opened their understanding and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached, how? In his name, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And lastly tonight, for this simple word of exhortation, the word of God tells us in Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given uh, under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. You can call on the name of Jehovah till your eyes pop out. You can call on the name of Buddha till your eyes pop out. You can call on Muhammad till your eyes pop out. But children, till you start calling on Jesus, you are just beating the air. And it's not that these people did not exist. It is not that Jehovah does not exist. But children, he says, when you approach me, you had better approach me through the revelation of myself in the person of the man Jesus Christ. Every time we pray and we say, in Jesus' name, we are acknowledging that God revealed himself through the man Jesus Christ. Every single time. And that's what he wants us to do. The Bible telling us whatsoever we do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. Amen. So tonight I would offer anyone that has not yet heard and obeyed this wonderful apostolic message, I would offer them a hand up. Just like Paul offered those that, that Apollos had preached to and that Paul came upon at Ephesus. I would offer you a hand up today. I'm not trying to knock you down. I'm not trying to hurt you, but I'm trying to tell you there's more to this thing. The Roman Catholic Church has so affected and polluted and diluted the message of Jesus Christ that it has you being baptized even in Trinitarian churches, uh, Protestant churches, has you being baptized in the uh, name and titles of the Trinity. I have news for you, my friend. You need to be baptized in the name of the one who saved you. Paul said, was Paul baptized for you? Or was Apollos baptized for you? No, was, were, the one that you are baptized into is the one who was crucified for you. I said, was Paul baptized? I meant to say, was Paul crucified for you? So the reality today is, my friend, that there is more to this message. Yeah, it's good. It's wonderful to believe. It's wonderful to repent. But there's more to this message. You must follow with obedience and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you must, at some point in time, some way, somehow, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And let God come into your life and have a controlling interest. Let's put it that way. Amen. Have a controlling interest. Praise God. We're not trying to knock you down. We're trying to offer you today a hand up in Jesus' name. But tonight, read that story of, a, the, of Paul coming upon those at Ephesus. Look at that story carefully and you'll see that he realized, whoop, they don't have it all. I need to help them out. Amen. Would you stand with me tonight? Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God. Master, we love you tonight, and we thank you, God, for this wonderful time that we've had in your presence. We thank you, God, that we are aware, and we do know the whole truth. We do know the whole message. Lord, we're grateful tonight that we don't just have part of the pie. We've got the whole pie. Master, tonight we just celebrate and rejoice in the knowledge that you've allowed us to step up higher in you and be in this place where we would have a full revelation of your salvation plan so that we would understand the full uh, impact of the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, and, and how the true uh, born-again experience is a rebirth experience for us. 
Lord, not only does the water break as the child's about to be born, but when the child is born, they cry out and their voice is heard for the first time. Oh, God, and the same is true of a newborn believer. God, the water breaks, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. But then they cry out and they cry out, the Father, as the Spirit of the Lord enables them, God, to speak with another tongue. A sign that they have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Master, today in Jesus' name, we just ask that this message, Lord, would touch the heart of every hearer. Oh, God, don't let anyone hear this word and not receive it. It's so important today. For we must walk in the light as we have the light, for we will be held responsible, God. For that which we have been, uh, that which you have illuminated before us, that which you've allowed us to see and understand, we cannot walk away from it. We've got to obey it. For Lord, if we walk away from it, we become that unprofitable servant. And our end does not look very pleasant. According to the word of God, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Lord, we don't want to be there. We want to be obedient. We want to be like the men at Ephesus who gladly received Paul's word, who gladly accepted his hand up. They didn't complain. They didn't say, well, I've been in this way for such and such an amount of time. But God, they simply received what Paul had to say. And they did. They obeyed and received in Jesus' name. God, help us today to be like those Ephesian people, we pray. For we ask it in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. Amen.